Welcome back, lady listener. Hey, welcome back. We've got the second installment of Party Princess by Lana Dash coming up in just a few minutes. So instead of reading lady listener emails today, I thought I would do something a little fun. Um, so earlier while I was working on the stickers, I was just sitting in my living room. I put on a movie mm -hmm. and I was looking for like just a romantic comedy to put on. And I had just finished watching the Netflix series where David Letterman interviews like celebrities. Have you seen that on Netflix? And I don't know if you watched it, but um, he had one with Ryan Reynolds and I had just watched I that one. Him. I adore him. And so the proposal was a suggestion. The one with him and Sandra Bullock. I've where, actually seen this one. Okay, great. So, you know, she's Canadian and she's going to be deported. And so he agrees to fake marry her. So it's just, it was charming as fuck. Still great. I got a little, little tear for Betty White because, you know, the yeah. queen. But um, after it was over, I was like, what questions do they actually ask people about this? Whenever you go to prove that you're, that you're in love and this is your spouse and you're not faking it. What questions oh. do they ask? So I pulled up the questions. 90 day fiance. I know. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. But what I want to do is. Are you going to ask me about my own spouse? No, I'm going to ask you about me. And I'm going to, and oh. I'm going to answer what I think about you. I'm going to see how close you and I, if we could fake a marriage to stay in this country. Okay. Even knowing each other as long as we have, I wonder if we can pass this. I just kind of glanced over. So I don't I'm know. curious because, you know, some of the stuff is like, I don't know what color your toothbrush is. I know, right? I don't know. Stu like one of the questions, like what kind of deodorant? I'm like, whatever I buy him. He wouldn't even know what kind of deodorant he wears. Like there was just weird shit like that. Okay. Let's All right. Do it. So let's do it. All right. So the first ones are what the development of your relationship says. Where did you meet? We met. Uh, online through we a website a facebook <laughs> blogging talking about romantic books mm -hmm. i would say we met in person the first time in las vegas oh okay i thought i, I don't know like it doesn't it doesn't specify oh, okay if they would say in person i would say okay I this know. is when we met and then i would supply the picture we've instantly failed this test do you see no, this because, because we don't have like, <laughs> no we wouldn't because i can i save every email i can pull up the email yeah. <laughs> And yep. then I could say, mm -hmm. this is where we met. And then I could provide pictures of when we met in Vegas. Yeah, true. All right. What did the two of you have in common? Blogging. <laughs> yeah. More where did you, all right. Uh, let's see. When did your relationship turn romantic? Well, you know, as it does. Um, How long you wrote that daddy book? All right. Started here's crossing one. Some lines. Yeah. Here's one. Who proposed to whom? In this situation, who would do the proposing? Uh, I feel like I'd be doing the proposing. I think you would too. I think I would absolutely be the one to propose in this situation. My anxiety wouldn't have let me. I'd be like, no, who would choose the ring? Uh, I me. think I'd still really. I think if I'm proposing, I'm choosing the ring. I know, but you I probably like, hate it. Sometimes though. I have such. I think about when we're doing covers sometimes. Know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm like, no, I can't. I don't know. No, it's got to be this way. Because <laughs> I can be very loose with control, but then tight in other areas with control, oddly. How many people would attend our wedding? Oh, my God. This would be our fight. I'd, I'd say seven. <laughs> oh, okay. I would not, I'd be like, Leah's going to want this huge production. Well, I probably I would, like, would now. Please. Like, you know, that would be my answer to them. I'd be like, we're going to have a fight about this. Uh-huh, true. <laughs> well, I was going to say, my first wedding, <laughs> um, it was only 50 people. So, I don't know about this time around. Probably the second time I'd invite more. But so I know I more. I'd be like, this, I don't know. We, we're we're going to have to have a fight about this. <laughs> yeah. Um, where would we have our wedding? I feel like it'd be a destination. Care. I think it could be a destination. I think that my family's so small that we would, they would happily travel out yeah. to North Carolina. You, there's more of you guys. There's more kids and stuff. All right. So this is about our living situation. Who gets up first in the morning? You. Absolutely. <laughs> How many alarm clocks do we set? <laughs> I, I usually set three. I set two. Okay. No, one. 
who makes breakfast? You, you would have to. Yeah. Have breakfast. I was going to say you'd never eat. <laughs> so far, we're doing pretty good at this, I think. Um, does your spouse drink coffee? You don't. Yes. You drink coffee. I will mm-hmm. random drink it. Like, yeah. From, it's not like I have to have it's a coffee. Like a, it's like a free for one. Yeah. Um, let's see. Who cleans the house? <laughs> Neither of us. <laughs> I think we would probably do well because we would have a cleaning service, mm-hmm. but I am also like roam and pick up. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. we would actually do very Our house I think, would be really clean. Well, if they asked us this like seven years ago, mm-hmm. it wouldn't have been that way. Cause remember I used to be more messy. Yeah. Yeah. But as I've gotten older and my kids are more well, older, in your new I'm house too. I think it's different too with you being in your new house now. Yeah, like, I'm more clean and mm-hmm. put things away and get agitated. So you made it look so nice. So it's like you want to keep it that way. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, where do you keep the spare toilet paper? <laughs> Why is that a keep, question? Okay, I keep it in not only the laundry room, the big uh-huh. supply areas, yeah. but then mm-hmm. I put extra ones in all the bathrooms. Yeah, I think that I feel like that's pretty. Like I don't even know why they're asking that. All right, so the kids. Who picks the kids up from school? I feel like that's me. I pick the kids up from school, too. Oh, that's right. You do. Okay. So maybe we switch back and forth. But um, we're both who, women, so. Who packs my husband? Time? But my husband takes my kids to school. Uh, well, I, Kevin does that here, too. He takes the kids. So you know what? Mm-hmm. We would probably end up splitting it since you yeah, get up earlier. Yeah, I'll get up. You, I'll probably take them and you pick them up. You would take them and I'd pick yeah. them. Who packs their lunches? I feel like I would because I'd be up. (laughs) I think you would. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, How many times a week on average do you eat out? (laughs) If we were married, I'd either, I'd either turn into you where I just never eat at home or you'd turn into me where we eat at home all the time. That's just something that we we would have to, we would have to tell them. Mm. So once we live together, that's something we'd have to figure out. Yeah. I guess we're not living together before marriage. (laughs) Well, because it's a K-1 visa. Generally, you're not. You're in different countries. So that's something that we would really have to figure out once we were together. Okay. How often do you see each other's parents? (laughs) Not often. (laughs) But I feel um, like I know them. Like I could give like yeah, a mm-hmm. like if they were like tell me about Leah's parents. Yeah, I could yeah. give you mm-hmm. an overview, a pretty nice overview. I wonder how many listeners could too. <laughs> They're like, no, I feel like I could too. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking about that cake your mom made just the other night. And I was oh, like, man. I want to try that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, what size bed would we have? A king king. size. Yeah, the (laughs) biggest fucking bed you can find. Um, Let's see. Some of these are weird. How many windows are there in your bedroom? I guess this is to prove that they've seen it. I don't know. Oh, I guess. Well, technically, you have seen mine. I don't have any windows. You have like a French doors, right? Yeah, I have a French door. Yeah. Look at that. I knew it. I knew the answer. We win. Um, do either of you read or watch TV before going to sleep? Do you have lamps next to your bed? <laughs> I guess all of the above. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a very uh, American I know. Thing. I guess so. This says, have you ever had an argument that resulted in one of you sleeping in another room? Whom in which room? <laughs> So I I think after a while, we were like, okay, we got to get different hotel rooms. (laughs) Yeah, I think we realized that early on. (laughs) That we're like, you know what? This ain't going to work. It's like, I'm clean. I'm up early. I'm like rolling out of bed. Like, where am I? I know. It's like, and then it's, I don't know what happens to your suitcase, but when you walk in, and maybe it's like the atmosphere or something, it's like when you walk in a hotel room, your suitcase is so pressurized that it explodes. Hey, I will tell you The second you walk in. It's because we have not traveled together in a few years. I mm-hmm. do not do that anymore. Like I don't believe you. I swear to you, like the last time we were at the beach house, the mm-hmm. first thing I did, I went upstairs and I unpacked. Did everything. you unpack it? Oh, that's everything. my favorite. I hung it. I 
folded it. I put it away. <laughs> I went and did patents because I didn't want things to be wrinkled. Yep. Mm-hmm. And just then I like settled in. But maybe that was because signings are so fast. Yeah. When I They're got chaotic. To, yeah. So maybe it was because I knew I was at this house for six mm-hmm. or seven days. I was like, okay, I'm unpacking. I want to be very settled. Well, and like you say, I mean, the signings and stuff too are usually like two days. You know, yeah. you're there. So it's like, why even bother? You know? Yeah. Um, let's see. When is your spouse's birthday? Oh, um, yours is September. This is coming up. Yeah, yours is September 18th. August 18th. Oh, shit. August 18th. I knew that. But yours is okay. like, I feel like yours is weeks away. Yeah, I have yours on my calendar, but I didn't cheat and look. I, I, I should know that look, though. Because- I know it's like the 5th or the 12th it's coming it's the 11th yeah you're I, really know. Close. Okay, I know yeah. i was mm-hmm. like it's the early next month it's coming yeah, in my mind yeah. i know i usually remember yours because yours is around when the kids go back to school so that's why i usually think like, oh that's okay um what did you do for your spouse's last birthday <laughs> oh no i don't like know. something i was gonna say did you do anything for your birthday last year did i, I do anything know. for your birthday last year you're asking me. I don't know. <laughs> Did I get Biggie for my birthday last year? Oh, maybe so. Did you go make that, that trip? Two years like- ago. I don't know. That might have been two Tom years has ago. no meaning. Okay. It has no meaning. But me and my husband are a little different because I like to pick my gift. Mm-hmm. And as weird as that is, it's because sometimes I'll see like a really cute pair of sneakers and he's not going to see that. And he's going to go out and spend $300 on something that I'm just like, Meh. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. I want to pick it. Mm-hmm. I get that. Yeah. But especially when it's something like that, you know, when it's maybe it's something that costs a little more too, where it's like, oh, I'd rather just do that. So <clears throat> I think the rest of these are more of like anniversaries. So I don't really know if we have an anniversary. I would say maybe the day we published the first book, if that's an anniversary, I don't know. Yeah, and I couldn't even find it because we technically pulled it on our own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To rewrite and stuff. So it was like I couldn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd have to go back and look at emails probably to figure out like when we were writing it. Because back then we used to email each other chapters back and forth mm-hmm. before we realized this is ludicrous. Like we have to figure out something else. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'd probably be able to go back because I remember I was due any day. And I had to schedule my C-section and I was like, I remember we finished the book and I was like, may, I, I think maybe I was within days of getting, you know, my C-section. And I was like, oh my God, what happens if I go into labor when this book goes live? And you're like, I guess we'll have two babies in one day. <laughs> I remember you saying that. And you, I was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> I will never, ever forget the day that you know, they told us that that step book sucked. <laughs> but then yeah. we went ahead and we went on and we wrote a Beauty and the Beast book and we just kind of threw it out there. Mm-hmm. And then we forgot about it. And then a friend of ours messages mm-hmm. us and yep. she goes, you realize they're talking about your Beauty and the Beast book on this form. Mm-hmm. And now it's selling like hotcakes. And we're like, yep. and we just happened to be together. Yeah, we were in New New York. York. Yeah, we were in New York. And some they she told us she was like, Your book's like number one in erotica or something like that. And we were like, What? Can't believe it. We opened it up and we were like, Oh my God. And I think that was really the moment because we just had we'd been torn down about the step book and we'd already started the beast one. So we just Mm -hmm. finished it. And I think we had, we were like, okay, whatever. We're not maybe doing this anymore. I think, yeah, I think we had talked about maybe like taking the fall or something. Like we were like, oh, maybe. And, but we, we hadn't really started writing it yet. And, but then we, that had happened. You know, we may have not continued. And I think about there's other authors out there who have just not hit that moment yet. You know, that ha- they haven't found their audience. They haven't, like, hit it at the right time or, you know, they haven't figured it out yet. And, and it hasn't come to them. And I just hope that, like, I don't want them to give up, you know, because it's like we could have easily done that. You know, I've seen authors that have been trucking at it for 10 years. And then all of a sudden, it's like, boom. Yeah. 
Yeah. Their books are everywhere. Everybody's buying them. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's crazy. It's like somebody even said something, you know, like Colleen Hoover, her books, you know, are crazy everywhere right now. And excuse me. Somebody was like at the bookstore I go to that's near here, the local one in editions. They were like, oh, have you read Colleen Hoover? And I was like, yeah, I have. She's been around for a long time. And it's like, I don't know if it's just this new wave of people, you know, of TikTok of people like discovering her books, you know, or that kind of thing. <laughs> but it's like, oh, no, she's been at this for a long time. And not that she hasn't been successful on yeah. her own for a long time. But I feel like the success she's having now is so much greater than anything she's had before before and she's been at this forever this so. always reminds me of and we have never been one to shit on 50 shades of gray Absolutely. i have so yeah, much respect for mm -hmm. it i have so much thing but a part of me has this little bit inside me that was like maya banks did this mm-hmm yeah, was like she was there and people didn't notice. I mean, people see her now, but I was like, she was doing this, man. Mm -hmm. And it's just interesting what hits and what doesn't hit and what picks yep. up and what's going. And mm -hmm. it's just crazy to me. You, I've always when people are like, how do you know what's going to sell and doing? You have no this, fucking clue. No matter how many authors mm -hmm. I've talked to, no matter how many people we've sat down and tried to figure out what it is, mm -hmm. nobody knows the secret. And that's just it. If somebody knew it, we'd all know where people put objects and try different things like that. And then BDSM blew up, you know, and all this other stuff. And yeah, I mean, Maya Banks was doing it. She was writing nasty erotica, you know, a long time before that's E.L. James male. came around. Yeah, Veronica. and like BDSM and stuff like that. And there were tons of people that were doing it. But it's just about, you know, who's going to hit it, you know? Like, you just don't know. But I was actually talking with Abby Knox about this the other day because Frankie Love has a web. She does, um, she writes blogs. And I forget the name of it. I should look up the site where I'm talking blogs? about this. She writes, like, um, she has a blog thing. Um Hold on, let me look this up because I don't I don't want to say the wrong thing. Here it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, so Abby Knox and I were discussing this, and she was saying that she wrote that book series, The Naughty Yachties, you know, based on the what was that show? Blow Deck. And so she was saying, like, I she was like, I love this series. I had so much fun writing it. It was the same kind of formula where like it was all based around this boat and this crew and it was safe, happily ever afters, like, you know, all these different kinks, like secret baby, um, uh, like daddy and issue, you know, daddy book or whatever. And there was like all these different things. And she was like, it just didn't sell that well. She was like, compared to all my other series, she was like, I did everything the same, same marketing, same promo. And she was like, I even I was, thought the covers were better. I would say <laughs> this. I am a Bravo junkie. Mm -hmm. I watch all the shows, but for some reason, and mm -hmm. I cannot tell you why, Blow Deck has never got me. Really? I tried to write, watch the first season. I think I got two or three episodes in. I was mm -hmm. like, I can't do it. I do not know why. I watch everything else. <laughs> all the other shows on Bravo I watch, and I do not know why Blow Deck can't get me. So, you know, she was just saying, um, you know, with the series, like, she really enjoyed it. She thought it was fun. And like I said, she did all the same marketing and promo and all that. And it just didn't sell. She was like, for whatever reason, I don't know why. And so, anyway, she was talking about, she said, um, uh, she subscribed to Frankie Love's Substack. So, this is like a blogger website for authors. You can go on there and you basically just blog and mm -hmm. people can go on and read your like daily thing. It's kind of like um, Patreon where you pay like I think it's like seven bucks a month or something for a subscription to Frankie Loves Info. To Frankie Loves Credit, she puts out every single month the money she made, the books she sold, the pages read in KU. She puts out everything. So if you ever want to like check it out, compare to what she's doing, like to see like how someone who is prolific as she is because she writes a ton of stuff and she also ghost writes too she's open about that on her like on substack and so she was saying that it recently 
the same thing happened to her that she had like a, her brat series that she recently wrote. She said, I thought it would be fun. It was like kinky and tropey and like I dirty. Bought the, I bought the last two. Okay. And so she was saying like, comparatively, the series flopped compared to like all her other series that she had written. So she's like, you really just don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. She was like, that's why you have to keep writing. Gonna step. <clears throat> yeah. And keep trying different things. But I went on there and like, you can read some of her stuff without subscribing to it. You just can't read the whole thing. But yeah, I mean, like I said, it, to her credit, she posts up everything. She is very transparent about the book she has in KU. And she talked about like a few months back when she pulled her list from KU from Amazon, she tried to release a series wide. She talks about the numbers with that and what she sold. And it's really like, it's really interesting. And this is something that not a lot of authors share. And I don't know that it's not like I wish everybody did this because I don't think, I don't want to know everybody's business. And I, I'm uncomfortable discussing money with some people too. Like, you know, with, with authors I trust, I don't have a problem like giving you hard numbers, but for it to just be out there for random people to see, that makes me nervous. But with Frankie Love, it's like she really seems she wants to share this information. And that's just her spirit, too. Like she really is just like a free spirit. Just, you know, I just want to share love and do good in the world. And I, I yeah. totally get her. No, I totally get this. that. Yeah. But I think yeah. I, I have a trigger in me where my dad's like, you don't <clears throat> let nobody know what's inside your house. <laughs> no, right. Right. He's like, you don't, they, you don't know nothing. You don't own nothing. You don't got nothing. There's mm-hmm. nothing here to see. <laughs> yep, exactly. So, but no, I mean, it was, it's really neat. So if you ever want to go check out Substack, there's a ton of people on it. So I just think what she's doing is pretty cool. So, but I, I just wanted to use that as an example of, you know, if you're out there and you're writing and you're, you know, still considering like what to do and where to go, you just don't know what's going to hit. So yeah, just keep it's at it. Hard. Don't give up. I know. You never know. It's like, I, there's no formula. I, yeah. And if somebody had it, we'd use it. (laughs) Not a clue. All right. So let's talk about Lena Dash. We've got the second installment of Party Princess. Excuse me. Before that, let me just remind you that um, this is part of the Bad Bridesmaids series. You can go get the free book right now on Book Funnel. That is, um, it's the follow-up kind of, it goes along with this story. So the heroine in this book, she, Beth, she pretends to be a famous pop star. Well, the free book that you can get right now is about the famous pop star. So you can go grab that. She'll have the links up on her Facebook and Instagram, and we'll be sure to um, share that as well. And then also check out um, the pre-order she's got for Curvy Girls Guide to Dating series. Those covers are so pretty too, because it's all plus size women on there. They're great. And I know we're saying pre-order, but a few of them will be out already. At this oh, yeah. Point. It should be and live by has, the time. Yeah. This there's out. a ton of other books on there, guys. So mm-hmm. if you generally, I feel like if you're going to like this, you're going to like most of our stuff. I think so, too. She seems to have Definitely. very much a style like we have mm-hmm. a style. Yeah. And she's really fun. And, like, I love that all her books are, like, they just, they're just a good time. And like she said, you know, they're you can read them on your lunch break. You know, they're not a huge commitment. They're kind of like a Lex Raleigh books. They're just quick and dirty. So, and also don't forget to enter this week's giveaway for the Amazon gift card too. So we're going to send you into the second half. Let's do it. All right. We'll see you guys on the other side. Bye. Chapter five. Beth. I thought seeing the city lit up from our sweet window was amazing, but it's nothing compared to seeing it lit up from 550 feet in the air. But then again, I wasn't aware of my apparent fear of heights until this moment either. Are you okay? Sean whispers into my ear. I nod, pretending that I'm not shaking. But I'm not fooling him. He encircles his arms on either side of me and holds on to the railing in front of us. I lean back against his muscular body and relax into him. Take a few deep breaths, he says. I'm right here. I won't let anything happen to you. I do as he says, closing my eyes and taking a deep breath. The rich scent of sandalwood in his aftershave fills my nose. 
everyone else in the pod melts away, leaving us alone high above the city. Sean runs his finger across my neck, pulling the hair from my wig back. My head tilts to give him better access, and his lips brush against my skin. Heat pools in my lower belly, and I grab onto him to keep from losing myself. His right hand lets go of the railing and pulls me against him. I can feel the unmistakable feeling of his hard cock pressed against my lower back. God, I want to kiss you. He breathes against my neck, just below my ear. I want to do so much more. I want that too, I whisper back. Why won't this thing move any faster? I chuckle and spin around to face him in his arms. Please tell me your hotel is nearby. I would charter a helicopter to get us there faster if I could. Well, I guess you will have to hold on to me until this ride ends. He pretends to sigh exasperatingly. Oh, the cross I have to bear. I'll see what I can do to make the next 15 minutes easier for you, I say, kissing a trail up his neck and over his eager lips. Despite it seeming like an endless ride, neither one of us pays attention as the wheel makes its descent to the platform. Instead, we are both too lost in each other's kisses to care to take in any more of the vibrant city below. When the wheel finally reaches the platform, Sean takes my hand and we walk back to the strip. He pulls me towards a parked black town car waiting for us. He holds open the door for me and gestures for me to get in. When did you call this? I ask. He smiles nervously at me. When you thought that I was trying to unhook your bra on the wheel, I was ordering us a car. Are you mad? Normally, I might be, but I'm impressed by your ingenuity to both make out with me and call a car service. So I'm willing to overlook this, I say as I get in. Then I can't wait to show you what else I can do, he says, jumping in after me. By the time we get to his hotel, we are both ready to go but something stops me as we weave through the casino floor to get to the elevators. I can't, I say, pulling him to a stop. What is it? He asks. I have to tell you something. I'm sure whatever you need to say can wait. He pulls me close and kisses me. The urge to melt into his arms and convince myself that telling him the truth can wait that he won't feel betrayed that I lied to him almost from the moment we met is strong. But I can't. It can't wait. We can't go any further until I say what I need to say. Okay, he says, a crease of concern in his brow reappearing. I take a deep breath, trying to find the courage and the right words to tell him everything. Why does he have to be so good looking? This would be so much easier to say if all of my lady parts weren't screaming for me to climb him. But I can't prolong this any longer, so I just blurt it out. I'm not Fiona Day. Sean. Just as Fiona says whatever she wants to tell me, one of the slot machines next to us starts going off for a jackpot winner. I don't know for sure, but I think what she said is, this has been the best day. Is that it? I ask over the commotion. She stares at me like I've grown a second head or something. You aren't mad? Now it's time for me to look at her like she's crazy. Why would you think that would bother me? I just wanted everything to be out in the open before anything happened between us. There isn't anything you could tell me that would change how I feel about you. She doesn't seem entirely convinced, but I'm determined to prove it to her. People will think we are crazy. No one falls for someone in one night. 
but I've fallen for Fiona. She's given me a chance to walk a mile in someone else's shoes. I got a chance to actually live out the night as a regular guy, not the guy on the screen who people think they know. If there's something I can do to make her feel at ease, I will do it. I reach out and cup her face in my hands. You may think I'm out of my mind for saying this, but I'm falling for you. I rest my forehead against hers. And I want to be with you. No matter how this night was supposed to be, you are who I want, now and forever. Eight, chapter six. Beth. I can't believe he took the news so well. Almost too well if I really thought about it, but I don't want to think about it. I want to get to his room. Now. Especially with the way his hands are currently roaming dangerously over my body in the elevator. There are cameras. I breathe out as he runs his hands up my sides and pins my arms above me. My ability to control myself with him is nearly gone. The bell of the elevator rings out. Sean releases my hands and spins around to block me with his body as another couple steps onto the elevator with us. I try to catch my breath, but Sean doesn't allow the other couple to stop what we were doing just a moment ago. He reaches back, running his hand over the side of my thigh and under the fabric of my skirt. I close my eyes and bite down on my lip to keep from making a sound as his fingers push aside the lace fabric of my panties. The man glances over and nods at Sean, but Sean doesn't give any hint to what he's actually doing to me. I rest my head against the contoured muscles of his back and grip his forearm, my fingernails digging into his skin. This doesn't stop him. He starts to work two fingers over my clit and into the wet folds of my pussy. Fuck, I hiss, unable to keep quiet any longer. The couple both turn to stare at me, but Sean doesn't miss a beat. She's upset about all the money she lost tonight, he says, as he pushes deeper inside me. I gasp just as the elevator door opens onto Sean's floor, and he removes his hand from beneath my skirt. Excuse us, Sean says, taking my hand and leading me out of the elevator. The doors haven't even closed before Sean leans down and picks me up over his shoulder. I squeal with laughter, ignoring the disapproving look of the woman and the smirk from the man. Put me down, I laugh. People will see up my skirt. This tiny thing? he asks, rubbing his hand up the back of my thigh to tug on my skirt. I squirm on his shoulder as his fingers brush down over that ticklish little spot behind my knee. His grip on me tightens, and I know I'm not going anywhere until he is ready to let me go. We get into his hotel room, and I only see the suite in passing as he walks us through to the bedroom. He lays me down and I don't miss the darkening, lustful look in his eyes as he reaches behind his head to pull off his shirt. You really should just walk around like that, I gesture to his bare chest, like all the time. He smirks and begins to help me with my clothing, piece by piece, until I'm sitting on the bed in nothing but my bra and panties. I'd say that you should walk around in only that, too, he says, his gaze moving up and down my nearly naked body. But I'd want to remove the eyes of any man that crosses paths with you. The unadulterated look of possessiveness in his eyes gives me a confidence boost that I've never felt before this moment. I push off the bed and kiss a trail down his chest, as I unbutton his jeans and tug them down. 
I run my hand over the thick length of his cock, tenting against the elastic fabric of his underwear. Lay down, I tell him. Sean spins us around and I push him down onto the bed. I love taking the lead at this moment. I reach behind me and unhook my bra, letting the straps slip from my shoulders and drop to the floor. Sean's breathing increases as his gaze drinks in my every movement. I slowly push my panties down off my hips and let them fall to a puddle at my feet. Fuck, you're gorgeous. He breathes, reaching out for me. I straddle his lap, moaning in pleasure as his hard cock rubs against my aching center. Sean's lips crush against mine. He flips us over so that I'm on my back. He pushes down his boxer briefs, freeing his glorious cock, and settles his hips between my thighs. I'm consumed with my need to feel him deep inside me, so I reach for him and guide him to my wet entrance. He pushes slowly inside me, allowing my body to adjust to his size before he sheathes himself completely. He sets the pace, moving in and out of me, allowing the friction of our bodies to build up the shared pleasure to our release. I can't get enough of him. The city outside disappears, even the room around us melts away, and it's just the two of us. Harder, I pant and grab his firm ass to push in deeper. Sean quickens the rhythm of his hips, moving us closer to the edge of our release. My inner muscles tighten around his cock, and he grunts that he's close. I'm right there with him, letting my body go and tumbling over the edge into orgasmic bliss. Sean thrusts one last time deep inside me and holds me close. We cling to one another, coming undone as one, cementing this beautiful moment and changing everything from this day forward. Lying in Sean's arms, I feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be. It's as if nothing can hurt me. I don't want this night to end, he says, pulling me close. It's perfect, I whisper back. A sudden pounding at the door makes us both sit up in bed. Sean grabs his jeans off the floor and slips them on just as the door of the suite bursts open. What the hell is going on here? Sean yells at the intruders. I pull the sheet up to cover myself, but there's no mistaking the compromising position that I'm in. Multiple people Blood into the suite. The man from earlier in the evening that I met at the club, a hotel clerk, and two armed Las Vegas PD officers. Ira, what the hell? Sean, I have been looking all over this city for you. Ira says. So you thought you'd burst into my suite with police officers? No, the officers are for her. He points to me with a malicious expression on his face. They are here to arrest her. She's not who you think she is. All eyes turn to me, and the urge to shrink down and cover myself up with the covers is very tempting, but ultimately ineffectual. Why would you want to arrest Fiona? What did you call me? I ask, sitting up and holding the sheet to my chest. Fiona. Sean looks from me to Ira and back again in confusion. My heart plummets like a rock in my chest, and suddenly the acid in my stomach rockets to my throat. I knew he took the truth way too well. I should have realized he didn't hear me over the jackpot winner. But then again, maybe deep down, 
I was afraid to bush and make sure he heard the truth. Didn't you hear what I said to you in the casino? He shrugs. You told me you had the best day. No. I shake my head. I said, I'm not Fiona Day. You can almost see the wheels turning as he plays back to that moment in the casino in his head. Why would you lie to me? I didn't mean for this to happen, I say, standing up and wrapping the sheet around me. There was a mix-up at the club and everything was happening so quickly, and before I could say anything, I met you. So you thought you'd mess with me and get me to fall in love? He stops. I can almost see the wall he builds up around himself. Sean runs his hands through his hair, turning away from me. I can't deal with this. I watch, rooted in my spot as he walks out onto the suite's balcony. Ira starts to follow after him, but stops and points to me. I want her out of here before we come back in, he tells the officers. What do you do in a moment like this? A moment when a spotlight shines down on the colossal lie you've told, and there's no justifiable answer to explain what you've done. I didn't have to pretend I was Fiona Day. I could have spoken up at any point in the evening and told the truth. And I think in any other situation I really would have. But there was something about Sean that made me stay quiet. He made me feel seen for the first time in my life. And I didn't want to lose that. Ma'am, I need you to get dressed, one of the officers says. Standing in a hotel room, dressed in only a sheet, about to be arrested? I'm beyond humiliated. This isn't how I thought this night would end. I glance hopefully out onto the balcony to Sean to see if he will come back in and I can explain. But he's having what looks like a heated discussion with the man who burst in here. Ma'am, the officer urges. Yes, I'm sorry. They allow me to take my clothes into the bathroom to get dressed. But there's no telling if I will get a chance to talk to Sean ever again. I need him to know how I feel. After putting my clothes back on, I look around the bathroom and find a soap bar on the counter. I pick it up and start writing him a note on the mirror. It's not ideal, but it will have to work. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. Love, Beth. I wish I could say more. I want to explain to him that it wasn't my intention to deceive him. But there's no more time left. So I walk out of the bathroom and turn around to allow the officers to put on their handcuffs. Chapter 7 Beth Sitting alone in a cell really gives you time to think about your life and the decisions you've made that put you here. Note to self, if the occasion ever rises again, do not pretend to be a celebrity, or anyone for that matter. I was so stupid. I lost myself just dipping my toe into the world of a celebrity. I don't think anyone could genuinely pass up an opportunity to get the tiniest taste of that life. But at what cost did I give up my heart and now my freedom for that one taste? So you are the one from the bathroom, I hear a woman say. I lift my head from my hands and look up into the somewhat familiar face of Fiona Day, staring back at me through the bars of my jail cell. What bathroom? I ask. You didn't see me, but I definitely saw you. Tonight, at the club. In the bathroom, she explains. I try to sift back through all the memories of this night, but some random interaction where I didn't see her doesn't come to mind. Instead, 
All I can think about is Sean. And my heart breaks at the look of betrayal he gave me before walking away. How'd you know I was here? I ask. I'm not really in the mood for visitors, but seeing as I'm not going anywhere, I don't really have a lot of options. She smiles and holds up her phone. I got a news alert. Oh, that's just great, I say, throwing my hands up. I get arrested and it's in the news. Calm down, she says. There isn't any mention of your name in here. The press still thinks I got arrested. They don't know anything about the switch we made this evening. The switch we made? You didn't think that you playing me for one night was your doing, did you? I shrug. I don't know. It all happened so fast. It was like a snowball rolling down the hill until it grew too big that I ended up in jail. Sure gives you one hell of a story, though, doesn't it? She smiles conspiratorially at me. What are you doing here? I'm here to spring you out. Fiona looks around like she's checking to see if anyone is around to overhear what she's about to say. Listen up. What? She waves me forward. Come here. What? I ask again as I lean forward. I've managed to smuggle in a cake with a nail file baked in. Is this some kind of joke to you? I snap. She laughs. <laughs> no, but you need to relax. My attorney is on the phone with them right now. He's getting the charge against you dropped. I told them it was my idea and you were just doing what I asked you to do. I open my mouth to let loose all the anger and frustration of the situation I'm feeling, but stop when her words hit me. Oh, well, thanks. You're welcome. I sit back down on the metal bench in my tiny cell and cross my arms. Where have you been all night since you bailed on the club and left me to be you? The Cheshire grin that spreads across her face says so much without saying a word. That is a whole other story, she says cryptically. Miss Collins? An officer walks out of the office and calls to me. Looks like you won't be spending the rest of the night with us. You must have friends in powerful places. Fiona points to herself and mouths, me. Sean, this is crazy, I say to myself as I pace outside the Las Vegas Police Department. What am I doing? Acting like an idiot, someone says behind me. I turn, and my heart stops. Beth? Wow. She shakes her head. No one can actually tell us apart, can they? I sigh. Fiona. Ding, ding, ding. Give the boy a prize. What are you doing here? I'm here to do what you were too chicken shit to do. I'm bailing out your dear sweet Beth. She's not mine, I say. But the lie tastes bitter in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, right. Fiona chuckles. I've seen your movies. You don't look at your leading ladies the way you look at her. She's right. How would you know? She holds up her phone. There are pictures of you two on a Ferris wheel looking pretty cozy. Why aren't you more upset about what happened? She shrugs. I may have played a little part in setting in motion you two meeting tonight instead of us. My heart aches at just the thought of not meeting Beth. When I walked back into the suite and saw that she was gone, I lost it. I fired Ira on the spot. It was a long time coming. But if I wanted to take control of my life, I needed to step away from Hollywood and everything about it. Beth showed me in her own way that there is more to life than living and dying by your latest box office numbers. But the normal life I've dreamt about can happen, and I can't imagine it without her. The front door opens, and we both turn to see Beth walking out. 
She stops in her tracks when she sees us. All at once, the ache in my chest lessens. I want to pull her into my arms and never let go. But a distance in her eyes keeps me rooted in my spot. I may have already blown the only chance with the girl of my dreams. Well, I think I've done all I can here, Fiona says, looking between us. It's my cue to go. We watch her walk off to a truck idling on the curb and kiss the guy waiting inside. What are you doing here? Beth finally asks, drawing my attention back to her. I needed to see you. But unfortunately, you left before we could talk. She scoffs and glances back at the LVPD sign on the wall. I didn't really have a choice to stick around. Right, of course. Did you get my message? She asks. I don't miss the hope in her voice. Yeah, I did. I step closer to her. I wanted to say more, but I didn't know if you'd want to hear it, she says, mirroring me. It was a lot to process. I tried so many times to tell you. You did tell me. I take another step, nearly closing the distance between us. When I thought about everything, I realized you tried a few times. Despite letting you think I was Fiona, everything else was me. So let's start over. I reach out my hand to her in greeting. I'm Sean. She takes my hand. I'm Beth. Hi, Beth. Hi. I cut her off with a kiss to wipe the slate clean between us. My arms wrap around her, pulling her tight against me, and I feel the ache in my chest disappear. She's right where I need her to be, in my arms. My Beth. Epilogue. Beth. The party starts in an hour, and I don't have much time to get ready. Sean is downstairs trying to corral our son, Davy, into finishing getting dressed before the guests arrive. I'm in the shower when I hear the door open. Babe? Yeah? I call over the stream of water. Need help in there? Sean asks pulling the curtain back and letting out the warm steam. Because you know how handsy, I mean, handy, I can be with a loofah and soap. No! I laugh and push him back, leaving a wet handprint on his sweater. Will you get out of here? Okay, but you know where to find me. I'm nothing if not a helpful husband. I'll keep that in mind, I say, and close the shower curtain. Davy yells from the other side of the door. Have you seen my Superman shirt? It's in the pile of laundry on your bed that you were supposed to put away. Oh, yeah. Are you going to wear yours, too? I ask, peeking my head out. That would be so cute. Sean lifts his sweater to show his Superman shirt underneath. We walker boys aim to please. Thank you. Sean turns and picks up the bar of soap on the counter. I watch as he writes me a love message on the mirror. I return to my shower, eager for the surprise when I get out. I love how, even after all these years, our little tradition continues. The guests begin to arrive right on time, carrying colorfully wrapped gifts for Davy's eighth birthday. I'm bringing out the last food tray when I hear my son scream with excitement. Uncle David! He runs across the yard into his delighted uncle's open arms. It makes me so happy to know that Sean and David were able to pick up their friendship as though no time had passed shortly after we officially started dating. Hey, buddy, happy birthday, David says to our son. Sean appears behind me, 
and wraps his arms around my waist, pulling me close. At this moment, I realize the vision I had so many years ago in Vegas, thinking it was a young Sean running around and laughing, wasn't Sean at all. Instead, it was our little boy, the spitting image of his father. What has you smiling like that? Sean asks. I spin around in his arms and link my hands around his neck. I'm just thinking about the night we met. Hell of a night, princess, he says, leaning down to give me a quick kiss. One for the books, Hollywood. This has been Party Princess by Lana Dash. Read for you by Kit Swan. Welcome back. Hey, thank you so much, Lana, for being with us this week and for bringing us Party Princess. We are so thankful to have your book with us. Um, join us back next week. I am so excited for next week because I've been waiting on this moment since like November because it's Anna Fury. And the reason I'm excited is because she's the one that came to the book signing that was in North Carolina here. Mm -hmm. She like her and her friend. They, um, oh my gosh, I can't, Opal, I can't, Fairchild, uh, yes, uh, they both came, and um, she was there, and we were talking, and she was so nice, and she had brought her book with her that she had just released, um, she had a print copy, and I was, it was in the car, and she was telling me about it, I was like, go fucking get it, I want to see it, <laughs> so she had to like go out to her car and get it and come back, so it was really great to see it. But, um, as, you know, I, I, we were booking for the next season. I was like, I wonder if she'd want to be on the podcast. And she was like, yes, absolutely. Let me do it. So I'm really excited to have her with us. So I'm excited to read your book. That's <laughs> awesome. I love getting new people and people who are excited and yeah, experiencing absolutely. other people. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I have actually somebody who I, a lady listener, I don't know, we just clicked one day she started messaging me and now we message like, all the time and she will introduce me to so many like she's obsessed with casey mint which have we had on the podcast i don't know i know she's done ads with us but we need to add yeah. her to our list yeah i did one actually, the other day for her mm -hmm. she actually does so i went and read a few of her books i would recommend like um the shrink and coach mm -hmm. but her heroines are a little different because they're a little bit stronger and the mm -hmm. heroes aren't necessarily in full on pursuit of the mm -hmm. heroines but they like want them but they want them in a way where they're like i'm not good enough does that make sense oh i like so they're that. not like yeah. pushing uh -huh. them but the mm -hmm. heroines are actually kind of strong you know like they mm -hmm. have these goofy personalities yeah. And they're doing their own thing. It was just an interesting feel because, like I said, they weren't pushing the heroines away, but they were also kind of like, I'm not good enough. I shouldn't do this. <laughs> but we'll it's nice. We'll have to reach out to her. I think that's mm -hmm. what we should try. But I just like hearing these different things and getting to hear mm -hmm. new authors like that to get to try. I agree. I love it. I think it. that's one of my favorite things about the podcast. I agree. I, I love it because there's so many authors that are new to me now that I just I adore. So, yeah. yeah. All right. We'll let you guys go. That was it. Bye. All right. Get out. Tell them what to do. <laughs> Fuck your day up. Make today your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. You could take a look in a book, that's fine. Or you could sit back, relax, and unwind and read.